Welcome to our course on managing containerized applications with Podman. In this course, we will embark on a comprehensive journey into the world of containerization, focusing on Podman, a powerful tool that simplifies the management of containers and container images. Throughout this course, we'll delve into the fundamentals of Podman, explore its unique features, and learn how to efficiently deploy, manage, and scale containerized applications. Welcome to the course overview for our journey into managing containerized applications with Podman. In this section, we'll outline the key stages of our course. First, we start with the introduction, where we set the stage for what you'll learn. Next, we move to the traditional OS model, explaining how applications run on physical or virtual machines. Following that, we explore the containerization model, showcasing how containers offer a more efficient approach. To make this clear, we'll use an analogy comparing houses and apartments to illustrate the differences between virtual machines and containers. Then, we'll delve into virtual machines versus containers, examining their distinct management software and functionality. We'll discuss interoperability, highlighting how containers offer greater flexibility compared to virtual machines. From there, we'll cover the advantages of containerization, including portability, scalability, efficiency, and faster startup times. After establishing a solid foundation, we'll introduce Podman, the focus of our course, and its key features. Daemonless architecture. Rootless containers. Docker compatibility. Support for pods. Systemd integration. Following this, we'll dive into basic Podman commands, progressing to more Podman commands, and then to managing containers with Podman. We'll continue with advanced container management techniques. Finally, we'll conclude with a practical demo, where you'll apply what you've learned in a hands-on session. Let's start by introducing containerization. We'll begin by establishing a foundational understanding of containerization, how it works, how it differs from virtual machines, and what its advantages are. This will set the stage for appreciating the significance of container management tools like Podman. In the traditional operating system model, applications run directly on the physical or virtual machine's operating system. Each application might need its own separate machine or virtual machine for isolation or different operating system environments. This can lead to underutilized resources and increased overhead for managing multiple operating systems. Containers provide a lightweight form of virtualization. Multiple containers share the host's operating system kernel while keeping applications and their dependencies packaged together in separate user spaces. This approach enables better resource utilization and reduces the overhead of running multiple operating system instances. Think of the traditional operating system model as a scenario where your computer is a big house and programs are like different families. Each family gets its own house, complete with separate kitchens, bathrooms, and living rooms. This means if you have 10 families, you need 10 houses, which takes up a lot of space and resources. In contrast, containerization is like a large apartment building. Each family lives in their own apartment, sharing common resources like the heating system, roof, and kitchen. This way, you can fit many families in one building efficiently, without wasting space or resources. Virtual machines and containers use different software for management and functionality. Hypervisors such as KVM, Zen, VMware, and Hyper-V provide virtualization for virtual machines, while container engines like Podman handle containers. You can manage hypervisors with additional software, which may be included with the hypervisor or external, like Virtual Machine Manager with KVM. In contrast, containers can be managed directly through the container engine. For managing containers at scale, tools like Red Hat OpenShift are used. With virtual machines, interoperability is uncommon. A virtual machine that runs on one hypervisor usually doesn't work on another. Containers, however, follow the Open Container Initiative specification, meaning they don't require a specific container engine to function. Many container engines can act as drop-in replacements for each other. The basic advantages of containerization include portability, scalability, efficiency, and faster startup times compared to virtual machines. 
you can start up multiple containers in a fraction of the time it takes to start up multiple virtual machines. Now that we understand containerization, let's explore Podman, the container management engine central to our course. Podman offers several key features that make it a powerful tool for managing containers. Podman has several key features, a daemonless architecture, rootless containers, Docker compatibility, support for pods, and systemd integration. No central daemon, unlike Docker, Podman operates without a continuously running background service. This reduces resource consumption and eliminates a single point of failure. Security, without a root-privileged daemon, Podman is less vulnerable to attacks. Efficiency, Podman uses system resources only when executing container commands, leading to more efficient resource utilization compared to Docker, which consumes resources continuously for its daemon. Podman allows users to run containers without root privileges. This enhances security by preventing privilege escalation attacks where a malicious container could compromise the entire system. Podman can run containers and images built for Docker without requiring changes. This includes Docker files and Docker commands, making it easy to transition from Docker to Podman for users and organizations. Podman introduces the concept of pods, which are groups of one or more containers sharing the same network space and other resources. This is similar to Kubernetes pods and simplifies the deployment and management of microservices. Podman containers can be integrated with systemd, allowing them to be managed as system services. This integration facilitates the start, stop, and management of container lifecycles using familiar systemd commands, improving automation and monitoring. Here are some basic Podman commands. Podman v, this command lists the Podman version. Podman login, this command logs into a registry. Podman pull, image, this command downloads an image from a registry. Podman images, this command lists all locally downloaded images. Here are some more basic Podman commands. Podman RMI, image, removes an image. Podman run, image, creates a container with a randomized name. Podman run, name, name, image, creates a container with a specific name. Podman run D, image, creates a container running in detached mode. Here are some commands for managing containers with Podman. Podman PS, lists all running containers. Podman PSA lists all containers, including exited ones. Podman stop, container, stops a running container. Podman start, container, starts a stopped container. Here are some commands for advanced container management with Podman. Podman restart, container, restarts a container. Podman RM, container, removes a stopped container. Podman RMF, container, forcefully removes a container. With a solid understanding of these commands, let's move on to our practical demo, where we'll put this knowledge into action. In the demo, we will set up the lab environment by first installing Podman, registering to a public registry so that we can have access to container images, pulling a container image from that registry locally, creating a containerized Apache web server to make sure everything is running as it should, validating our work, and then cleaning up our work, making sure that we're always tidying up after ourselves. So let's get started. Now, before starting the demo, I would first like to list the prerequisites for the lab environment. You will need a machine, virtual or physical, running either Red Hat, Fedora, Alma Linux, or Rocky Linux. I have Fedora for the demo. Additionally, it's worth noting that Fedora comes pre-installed with Podman, so no further installation steps are necessary. We'll start our demo by using the podman v command to check the version of podman installed. This command will display the current version of podman installed on the system. Then, I will use the podman search httpd command to search for an http image on the registry. This command will list all available container images related to the term httpd from the default registry. Next, I'll use the podman pull registry.access.readat.com slash ub9 slash httpd-24 command to pull the desired image locally. This command will download the specified image from the Red Hat registry to the local system.
I will use the podman images command to see all locally downloaded images. This command will display a list of all container images available on the local system, including their repository, tag, image ID, and size. Now, for a quick joke break, why did the container go to therapy? Because it had too many issues to docker with. Back to business. I will use the podman run d name mywebregistry.access.redat.com slash ub9 slash httpd-24 command to start a container based on that image. This command will create and start a container named myweb based on the specified image in detached mode d, meaning it will run in the background. Afterward, I will use the podman ps command to see all running containers. This command will display a list of all currently running containers, including their container ID, image, command, created time, status, ports, and names. To stop the container, I'll use the podman stop myweb command. This command will stop the container named myweb gracefully. Now, for another quick joke break. Why do programmers prefer to use containers? Because they always like to be in a safe environment, free of dependencies, then, I'll use the podman ps a command to see all containers stopped or started. This command will display a list of all containers, including both running and stopped containers. To start the container again, I will use the podman start myweb command. This command will start the stopped container named myweb. After that, I will delete the container using the podman container rm myweb f command. This command will forcefully remove the container named myweb, even if it's still running. To remove the image, I'll use the podman image rm registry accessredatcom slash ub9 slash httpd-24 command. This command will delete the specified image from the local system. Finally, I'll use the podman images command again to ensure the image has been removed and clean up our lab environment. This command will display the updated list of container images available on the local system. We have successfully set up our lab environment. Awesome! Congratulations! Now that we have our lab environment up and running, we can now go into the next module where we shall be running a containerized database while also introducing some new concepts and podman functionalities. See you soon!